said, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys. That's it right there. To dwell in the cliffs of the valley. In caves of in, the earth. In caves of the earth. Go ahead. And in the rocks. And in the rocks. So that was during the Renaissance, but guess what? Back to Ezekiel 24. Read that part again. It says they shall be shut up in prison. Yes, sir. Isaiah. Yes, sir. Isaiah, I'm sorry. Isaiah 24. I ain't looking at the verse. Help me out. Yes, sir. I got you. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Uh -huh. And shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. They're going right back to that same prison. You remnant of Edomites, y'all cannot go past the Caucasus Mountains. Y'all no. stay right there. But then no. guess what? The Lord's going to tell us, release them. Let them go out. And their job, Gog and Magog, they're going to gather together an assembly of nations. They're going to be building weapons again. So now back to Ezekiel 38, verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Gog. The land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Come on. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army. So God wants them to war against us. Go ahead. Horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Come on. He names Persia. the nations now. Go ahead. Persia. Persia, that's Iran. Ethiopia. Uh -huh. And Libya. Uh -huh. With them. All of them with mm -hmm. shield and helmet. Mm -hmm. Gomer and all his bands. Come on. The house of Togoma of the North Quarters and all his bands. Germany, France. Go ahead. And many people with thee. Many people with thee. Go ahead. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. Watch this. After many days thou shalt be visited. Stop. Back to Isaiah 24, 22. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Back to Ezekiel. After many, verse 8. After many days, thou shalt be visited in the latter years. When? In the latter years. So now we might think that latter years is now, but it's not based on Revelation 20. It's letting you know it's after when, brothers? Thousand year reign. Go ahead. All praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakodash. Number one is to our apostles, our elders and bishops at Great Millstone that taught us the truth and who rule well. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who risk your lives, your freedom to help push the truth, the true wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. Shalom, peace and love to you believers. Now you've all seen by now you know, the video of uh, uh, Nate, Bishop Nate of the IUIC. All right, and basically him accusing us of all having Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, wrong. And um, apparently the breakdown that we break, it, break down comes from Christians. You know, according to all right, his words, all right, in which it's actually the opposite. You know, the, the weird breakdown that they're trying to break down actually comes from the so-called Edomite scholars of this world. All right. And his breakdown is wrong according to the scriptures. And we're going to prove that. All right. Because after this great battle, which is known as World War Three, all right, which you have, um, according to the scriptures, it says that there will be three woes. And each of those woes indicate are right, one of the great wars that will happen upon the planet Earth. All right, uh, uh, there's a scripture that says, "Woe, woe, woe!" All right, to the inhabitants of the Earth that's dealing with World War One, Two, and Three. And there's another scripture that says, um, "The the se uh, second woe has passed." All right, and the third one follows quickly. All right, so that third woe 
is this great destruction, which is also known in the scriptures as Armageddon or the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. And there will be a battle between uh, two superpowers, which is Russia and America. And according to the scriptures, Russia is identified as all right, Gog and Magog is also identified as the bear. All right, America is identified as the gray whore. It's also spiritually known as Babylon. All right, it's also uh, spiritually known as Egypt. All right, it's also spiritually known as Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, in which it will be destroyed after the manner of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, one more name that Russia is called by within the scriptures, they're also known as... Uh, in, prof in prophecy, they're known as the Medes. So there'll be a great battle, all right, between uh, uh, Gog and Magog, which is Russia, and America, all right, which is the Great Horror, as well as their allies, which is NATO. All right, and in that war, all right, they're going to fight against each other. Many other nations are going to be drawn into into that battle as well. But eventually, our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai is going to come. And he's going to put it into all of them. Now, in that great majesty, in that great power, in that great, you know, uh, brightness, in that great strength that Yahweh Shah is going to come in, you're telling me that a nation is going to escape that wrath? All right. And then after a thousand year period, they're going to come back and they're going to think an evil thought and come up against the nation of Israel and fight against us again. That's off according to what the scripture says. Also, uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse verse 7. And Yahweh thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. So when you read Deuteronomy 28, you see all the curses that were put upon us. Most of us said he's going to put all these curses upon our enemies. He's starting to do it now. These curses, when they're fully put on our enemies, they're not going to be in any position to go and gather and do any fucking any, anything. They're going to all these curses. That, look at look. Are we are we? Is there any might in our hand? Are, can can we actually fight and, and gather anything? When these curses upon them, they're not going to be able to do anything. They're not. They're, when they're in slavery and they're they're in, in chain, they're not going to be able to do anything. After a thousand years, he saw. You read uh, Obadiah. They're going to be uh, basically exterminated, eradicated. To, to to say that Esau's still going to be here and he's not going to be eradicated. He's going to give one last hurrah. That would mean there had to be a fourth wall. So you have World War One, World War Two, World War Three that's about to happen right now. And then we get the kingdom. And then there's going to be one last fourth war. He's recording it. All right, so there's there's not going to be no uh, fourth wall. There's not going to be another time where all these nations are. Uh, yeah, these nations are going to be in, in subjection. They're going to come up in, uh, to the, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. They're, they're, they're not going to be uh, 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 trying to, you know, come against us. And the ones that don't, well, this talks about uh, they won't receive uh, any rain. Any rain, right. You know, so it speaks about a curse that's going to come upon uh, the nations if they refuse to obey Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Now you're telling me when Yahweh Shai comes and the world sees the great judgment that's gonna happen to America, all right, which causes this land to smoke as a monument, all right, to, you know, for many generations, that they're gonna, they're gonna still, you know, uh, um, be bold enough to try to fight against Yahweh Shai who's gonna come in the chariots and, and, and destroy them. You know, that's not accurate according to the scriptures. Now, when you go to Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, and it speaks that that they shall think an evil thought and that they're going to eventually come up against um, 
Israel. All right, that's speaking about Gog and Magog coming up against those small hats that are in the land of Israel. All right, currently, all right, which they're in our land. Yeah, we are the people that are saved and, and taken out of uh, many, many nations. And, but that, that particular land belongs to us. So when it says that they're going to come up against Israel, it's not actually talking about us. It's talking about the land that belongs to us. Now, scriptures that prove that once we're establishing the kingdom of heaven, first of all, we're going to have spiritual power. Come on, man. All right? We're going to have spiritual power, and we're also going to have power over these nations. All right, when we come down from, from heaven with Yahweh Shai, according to what it states, you know, Yahweh Ratazah, we'd be a part of that uh, 144,000. All right, the upper echelon of the elect. We're going to have spiritual powers and we're going to come down judging the nations and setting them in order. All right, uh, Isaiah, the 24th chapter, speaks about us gathering the elites all right, out of the dens and the caves of the rocks. So you think that we're not going to be privy if there was such a case of the uh, the Russians planning a, an attack against us? You think we won't be privy to that? We're going to go through the whole world setting everything in order. So at what? It doesn't even make sense. But ultimately, when you go into our chapters like Isaiah the 60th chapter, or the, uh, Isaiah the second chapter, Isaiah the fourth chapter. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, even Isaiah the 11th chapter. All right. Uh, which, if we can grab those, Yahweh Ratazah. All right, it speaks about how. All right, uh, um, there's going to be peace. All right, there's going to be peace amongst us. All right, when we're establishing the kingdom, the scriptures say that they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my, my holy mountain. The scriptures also mention how these nations are going to beat their plowshares into pruning hooks. All right, so all of these weapons or the, the money and the resources that they were using to formulate ICBM missiles and to build up their military, they're not going to do that anymore because the earth is going to be at peace. All right, the, the common denominator, the, 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 the major problem of the earth is when Yahweh Shai comes, it's going to be uh, taken out So therefore they're not going to need that anymore Alright these nations are, are Can't wait until we get into power According to the book of um, Romans the 8th chapter Alright verse 20 The creature you know uh, Earnestly wait for the manifestation Of the sons of God Because when we're in order We're going to rule according to the laws and the commandments And we're going to establish peace in the earth So all of the problems of the earth Is going to be taken away Every single one of them. All right, Esau, Edom is going to be in slavery. All right, and then after a thousand year period, they're going to be taken completely off of the earth. You got something not? Uh, yeah, this is a uh, Revelation chapter, the, the heart of the matter. Revelation chapter 20, and verse 8. I'll start with 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. That has already happened, but go to keep reading. And uh, matter of fact, uh, we was kind of going over it when we did the uh, sit down with the uh, elder, basically how he came out of the Renaissance. And basically, the, they call it with the age of discovery. You know, he's basically getting back into power. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So... They're basically using this to say, I guess, when we're we're when we're in the land, you know, that's this is when it's going to happen. It's, this is going to uh, take place, and then you know they're going to get one last hurrah. The it, when the Most High sends His Son, 
to destroy this place. You you think there's gonna be all these, you know, uh, like this whole infrastructure is gonna be completely destroyed. You know, these, like the world how you see it today is not gonna be what you see. These, these other nations are gonna be able to just, you know, get on a, a laptop computer and, and call each other and say, yeah, Let's 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 go let's go together and you know let's link up and we're gonna none of, none of that is is happening that's that's complete madness. Uh, another verse I wanted to grab is uh, Obadiah chapter one and verse. And and it's funny that he's saying that that prophecy doesn't apply to World War Three. In the wake of uh, World War Three brewing up over there, you know, in the Middle East between the the Muslims, you know, in the small hats, you know, so it, it sounds in a, in a sense that he's like being in the like coming to a defense for them, you know, and there's been you know stories of him taking a bag, but you, you're starting to see it more and more. You know, it's it's like all of the prophecies, you know, that has something to do with the salvation and the deliverance of the children of Israel out of America, you know, and our enemies being destroyed. He doesn't want that to fit that, you know, including that of the MOTB. All right, it's very strange, all right, and it's very odd, you know. But however, uh, that particular war is brewing up over there, and you see uh, uh, the 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 individuals that it say would take part of that, that war getting prepared as well, such as Iran, you're hearing that name a lot. All right, as well as think there's things going on between America and Russia. All right, and also uh, Russia will, will back Iran. So as he's saying that this scripture doesn't uh, apply all right, to World War III, we're seeing that the actual scripture speak right now. This is Obadiah 1 and 7. All the men of thy confederate have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Uh, shall I not in that day, saith Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? So... Basically, you're gonna have uh, a lot of these nations gonna turn. A lot of these nations already have on 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 Esau. You got more? Uh, no, that was it. You might grab an Isaiah the 60th chapter, the beginning around the the ninth verse. Isaiah chapter 60 verse nine. Surely I shall wait for thee for me. And the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Kind. So this is speaking after the children of Israel are De delivered, you know, and reestablishing in the land, the nation of uh, the land of Israel is going to be the hub, you know, of our of our rulership. All right, it's going to be the main place that we're ruling from. All right, when we rule over the earth, and all of these nations are going to be uh, um, in subjection to us. All right, they're going to bring gifts. All right, and they're going to bring those gifts out of their fear all right one scripture to add into that is jeremiah 33 and 9 and it shall be to me a name of joy a praise and honor before all nations of, in the earth of the earth which shall hear of the good that i do unto them and shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that i procure into it so you're telling me all of the nation of the earth are fearing and trembling all right, that one of them, you know, being Gog and Magog, Russia, all right, uh, uh, being afraid and trembling is going to build up enough confidence to come up against us 
with spiritual power, all right, being under the protection of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, chariots, you know, and angels present, all right, that they're going to have enough confidence and strength to try to uh, give one last attack doesn't, doesn't, doesn't add up, you know. Uh -huh. And the sons of strangers shall build uh, up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath have I smote thee, but in my favor have I found mercy on thee. Therefore, my, thy gates shall be open continually. See, thy gates shall be open continually. You got it. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought Because we're going to have slaves And the bulk of slaves is going to be that of these rulers All right, of these nations All right, especially the rich elite banking families That are ruling over the earth All right, which they're controlling Basically both sides And they're controlling, you know, uh, these different nations And causing this uh, uh, war To uh, uh, come into fruition it's the Heavenly Father that's making it happen through them. You got it. Verse, uh, Isaiah 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee. Uh, read it again. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. Fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Which the place of his feet is is the land of Israel. So he's going to beautify it, uh, the land of Israel. You can read about that in the book of Revelation. All right, the streets of gold, you know, and you know, there's other places as well. I believe in Isaiah as well as our Second Ezra. All right, tells you how the how beautiful the the kingdom is going to be built up. The sons of also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Uh, thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Yahweh, am the Savior and the Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood, brass, and for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thy uh, exactors righteous. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. <laughs> See, that's a cut right there. All right, violence shall be no more heard in thy land. Which means that none of these nations are going to come up against us to attack us. Alright? Not Gog and Magog or any other nations. They're all going to be afraid and trembling. Alright? No one's going to think to do that. Alright? Uh, um, to try to, you know, give one last attack or an attempt. Alright? To establish their rulership. Alright? It will be easily thwarted. All right, because there's no way that you can come up against, you know, spiritual power. All right, so the nations are going to be fearing and trembling. Uh, um, all right, after Yahweh Bashim Yahweh judges, all right, Babylon, all right, the chariots come destroying and killing, you know, our, our adversaries, our enemies. All right, Yahweh Shai leading that charge. All right, uh, um, all of the, the militaries that were gathered in that Middle East, all right, they're going to be completely destroyed, all right, including Gog and Magog, which uh, Ezekiel, the 30, 39th chapter, tells you that they're going to be destroyed, all right, in that event, all right, of what is known as World War Three.
Cupid. Uh huh. Uh, back to Isaiah, chapter sixty, verse eighteen again. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Kind. So the, in the land we're gonna have complete peace. It ain't gonna be like how those those small hats are over there and they have to have something known as the iron dome. We're not we're not gonna need an iron dome. And we're not gonna need any help or aid or protection from any other nation. Alright, as they need. Alright, uh, uh there's not gonna be any 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 fear of any rockets or bombs uh hitting us. Alright, because we're gonna be fully protected. But then these nations are gonna be all put in order. All right, and under our subjection, they're going to be in slavery. So there's not going to be one last uh, uh, fight. All right, as the Ox said, a World War IV, you know, or a great battle, a world's battle. I want to read a scripture in the NLT real fast, the book of Isaiah 4, 5 through 6. It says, then Yahweh will provide a shade uh, for Mount Zion. And all who assemble there, he will provide a canopy of a cloud during the day and a smoke of flaming fire at night, covering the glorious land, which is what? That's a that's a, a great chariot. That's a chariot. All right, that's a chariot. And that sounds like what? That sounds like uh, what transpired within uh, the land of Egypt when the children of uh, uh, Israel was coming out of there. All right, the pillar of fire, all right, by day, or a cloud by day, and I'm in a pillar of fire by night. All right, we're going to be fully protected. You know, so even if a nation thought that, it will be nothing that they can th do. Even though that's not going to happen because these nations are going to be completely put down. You got a uh, last one you want to end off on? Uh, that was uh, all I had. Okay. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Yahweh Ratazah, this lesson was an edifying one. All praises, honor, and glory being to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. And double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and mercy being to the hopeful elect. Shalom.